Hi there, Doug Stewin with IT Creations. Today we'll be taking a look at the new Intel Xeon scalable processor, codenamed Cascade Lake. Specifically installing one or two of these second generation processors in your Dell Precision 7820 or 7920 tower workstation. Will it work? Yes, it will and Dell has a procedure to update the system to support that new processor. Let's do it. First off, what's the advantage of the Cascade Lake scalable processors, which is the successor to the Skylake scalable series, now lovingly referred to as Gen 1? Well, if you saw our last video, you would know that what you do get is increased performance, also support for more and faster memory, a slightly faster clock speed, and support for the new Intel Optane data-centric persistent memory modules. There's also a new scalable Platinum family, the 9200 series, that has a whopping 56 cores. Can we get one of those for the system? Nope. I'm not quite sure why the advertising centers around the 9256 core beast when tested against the previous generation Platinum 8180. The problem? It's only available on an integrated chip on a motherboard that most manufacturers will not be using for mainstream appliances. But who cares about that? We have this dual processor Dell Precision 7920 tower workstation we set up that features 64 gigabytes of 2666 megahertz memory, a single NVIDIA P6000 GPU, and two M.2 NVMe drives up front, one of which is hosting the OS. Currently, it's running dual Intel Gold 6144 CPUs, which we're going to replace with dual Intel Xeon Scalable Gold 6244 processors. These Gen 2 processors share very similar characteristics to the Gen 1 version, with a slightly fa faster clock speed and just a hair more cash. For the record, the recommended price is exactly the same at $2,925 each, at least on Intel's side. The question, will these new processors supercharge your system? I have no idea. Let's just say it was somewhat anticlimactic on the last video, but I have high hopes for this one since we're going to be testing dual processors this time. We'll see how that goes. Here are the specs on our current process of the Intel Xeon Scalable Gold 6144 against our soon to be installed Intel Xeon Scalable Gold 6244s. We have two because we wanted to test this system using an M.2 drive like on the ZHG4 CPU upgrade video we did a few weeks back. We didn't have a single dual or quad drive Dell branded PCIe card and I couldn't wait, so we went with dual processors. Why? Because you need two CPUs to activate the M.2 drive caddies in the front drive bays. Did I mention we have those too? But before you decide to grab one of those, you will need the backplane to support the M.2s up front. Anyway, this system will support a total of four M.2 drives up front, and you can see our Dell 7920 review video here. There are two ways, possibly three, to update the system. You can go to the Dell support page, then drivers and downloads, and let Dell detect your system and suggest driver updates. That's actually Dell's recommendation. Although if you are a security freak and don't trust those automatic downloads, I mean, who does? Then let's try something else. Option two would be running our 7920 system and navigating to the driver section on Dell's support page and installing directly onto our workstation. But let's do option number three, as it seems to be the most complicated. Keep in mind, if we do screw up, we can always roll back to and revert to the previous driver version. Just don't stop the update process before it's complete because that might cause other problems. Let's begin by reading the directions, but first, a few warning messages. Here are the directions for updating the BIOS from Windows. As you can see, pretty straightforward. Download the file, click to save to your hard drive, then browse to the location where you place the download and double click the file. This will restart your system automatically. It will update the BIOS and once complete, restart again. We're going to complicate things by downloading the update to a USB drive and following these instructions, also on the Dell site, like such. Once the BIOS update is complete, we're going to install the Xeon Scalable 6244 processors to replace the 6144 CPUs. Okay, so we copied the file to a USB stick, placed it in a USB port, powered on the system, waited for the Dell logo and hit F12, went down the list to the other options section and selected BIOS flash update. Found our file on the USB drive, selected the file, clicked OK, we verified the existing and updated BIOS info, then clicked to begin the update. Reviewed the bad things might happen message and clicked yes. The good thing is it's not as bad as like those pharmaceutical ads you might see on TV where the product may cause bleeding on the brain, heart palpitations, and possibly death. <laughs> Next, you'll see a progress bar, and when complete, the system restarts automatically. Automatically, don't touch it. I'm just gonna say we tried three times to update the system using the USB stick and then just downloaded the program directly to our system, double click the file, follow the instructions, and then the system restarted it automatically. It worked. Next, we're gonna replace the processors, but don't do that first. Installing the processors is pretty easy. Just don't touch the pins on the processor and handle it on the edges. First, we remove the two CPUs and clean off the heat sinks because we will be using those again. 
Then we install the new CPUs in the plastic positioning frame and place the processors in the socket, making sure to line up the arrow on the processor corner with the arrow on the edge of the CPU socket. Place the thermal paste in a spiral pattern on the heatsink contact point, then position the heatsink over the CPU, again lining it up with the arrow on the board. Oh, and in this case, there is a heatsink for CPU 0 and CPU 1. Had a little problem with that earlier. <laughs> Follow the screw tightening order to make sure the CPU is seated in the socket correctly. By the way, it's reverse order for removal. Next, we're going to plug it in and power it on. Then we're going to compare the 6244s with our benchmarks we took for the Gen 1 6144s before the switch. So looking at the numbers, our first pass with Cinebench blew the doors off of our single processor setup with a ZHG4 we use for editing our videos. But I should note our configuration for that platform only had one silver family processor instead of two gold, so not really surprising. Okay, so the 6144 CPUs clocked in at 7625, and I must say that was very fast. The 6244 clocked in at 7989, which is definitely a bit faster, but not crazy faster. The increase in performance was only a 4.5%. We also tried it with 2933 MHz memory modules with a negligible increase of about 7 points at 7996. Although Cinebench is a CPU test, so memory speed is not really a consideration, but I thought we might get some questions on that topic. So there you have it. And this is going to sound a lot like the end of the Z8 G4 video, but we did get a statistically significant increase in performance of 4.5%. Again, keep in mind these processors have almost the same specs, with the Gen 2 offering a slightly faster clock speed and a wee bit more of cache. For more pronounced increase in performance, I'd go with a different processor. Still, the Dell is flying with just 128 gigabytes of memory, and as one of our other subscribers had said on many occasions, we didn't even maximize memory performance with a dim in each memory channel, because, well, <laughs> we just didn't. IT Creations carries all the enterprise hardware you need, and if you are interested in new processors, memory, a new GPU, or a new server or workstation, give us a call. If you have any questions on this video, or any other, just post them in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and comment. I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.